let's do some photo bashing in Procreate. I'm gonna walk you through some of the major techniques that I use to create this piece. And yes, it is another horned creature with trees for antlers, but I won't tell anybody if you don't. Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. If you're new here, I am a traditional and digital artist with a love for learning new things. So if you love all things art and you like this video, consider hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so this time we have a digital art video. Um, let's not waste any time here. We're jumping right in. If you are new to photo bashing, uh, some people call it photo manipulation or compositing, matte painting. Uh, basically, I consider it anything where you are combining photos to create a whole new composition. And I personally use a lot of digital painting techniques um, in my photo manipulations too. So just because I would rather paint, <laughs> paint my lighting in rather than have to hunt even longer for photos, um, with lighting that's more consistent to the scene that I'm working with. So I'm starting out with this image of an elk and I'm going to just remove the bulk of the background because I know I'm not going to use any of it. And this will help me just better place my subject before I spend too much time with a cleaner cut. Then I start adding my environment elements and I'm just playing around with different things right now, grabbing different elements and sizing them up or down. I'm going for kind of a Colossus theme again, so I do want to play with the scale comparison a bit. I want to make it feel like the elk is just massive. So I can do that in a few different ways. Uh, one of those ways is I'm going to add this next element. I really like the stairs and the rocks, and it just felt like I could make a cliff out of it. So I'm going to place that in my foreground because when you have an element like this and then you see that elk is farther in the distance, you really get the sense that he's pretty big in comparison um, to what you would normally think anyways, because you know, logic, the farther something away is, the smaller it should look, right? So then I'm gonna push that concept even farther by putting this row of trees between the elk and the cliff. So now he's even sticking up above the tree line. I go more in depth on the different methods I use to remove backgrounds in a different video, and I will link that video in the description if you wanna watch that later. Now I'm feeling like my background kind of pulls the viewer out of that perspective that I'm building, so I'm gonna just shrink it down and go find a stock image for the sky in distant background. I pretty much use unsplash.com for everything. Sometimes if I don't feel like I can find what I need, then I'll venture out to something like Pixabay. I've never been desperate enough to pay for stock images, but I know it can really speed up the process just because there's so much more available to you. For now, I just do this for fun, but maybe someday when my channel is actually monetized, then I will venture into some different things that I can recommend. So obviously my sky is too narrow for this scene, so I'm just gonna duplicate it and piece it together. And then what I will end up doing is painting over top of it with like the clone tool and a few other brushes so that it doesn't seem so mirrored. And it's that middle section that you really need to be watching for because that's where it's gonna be the most obvious. But once I get all my elements in there, you may not even notice the outer edges either. So I don't normally do this, but I wanted to just turn on all my elements and trace over it so I could get a feel for my composition because I was feeling a little lost in it. Then I realized I didn't really like the placement of my elk, so I just flipped him around and rotated him, which felt a lot better to me. And it helped me decide what I was gonna do with my lighting as well. So I'm just sketching in where I want all my elements to go because I wanna create this small tree village in his antlers. So when I turn all my elements off, I get a really good feel for the whole piece. And now this is the part where my recording didn't work. I lost two hours of straight up recording. So I had to grab the process video from Procreate, which, is not ideal, but you can still see what I'm doing, which a lot of this was just cutting and blending the elements together. The video mentioned in the description also has more in depth of how I use curves to adjust lighting and just the color of the different photos as well. Uh, the Procreate time-lapse feature is kind of nice if I wanna do like a full video time-lapse crunch down into 30 seconds, um, but the problem is it only records like your brush strokes instead of like the real time actions. So I feel like when you speed it up, it, everything just kind of happens too fast. You can't see all the adjusting I'm actually doing on the elements to build the tree village. So I do apologize for that, but maybe I can spend some more time about that in a different video. In the end, I did decide to remove the extra layers of trees that I had originally had as my background, just because I felt like it was too much. Sometimes less is more, and I didn't really want to juggle one more element, so 
off it went. Now I'm back to my normal recording and I turn off my sketch layer just to make sure I'm still headed in the right direction. Now you may notice that I erased the trees in my foreground kind of cliff element. Um, I didn't want to keep them because I really didn't want to cut them all out. <laughs> so I'm just painting them back in from scratch because for me it's faster. Painting on top of a photo can be a little scary at first because you don't want it to look completely obvious that it wasn't original to the photo. The key to this is being consistent with your photo. Uh, be consistent with the texture, the level of detail and color. So I will often color pick from the photo wherever I'm painting it. It can take a bit of practice to identify the characteristics that makes the photo look the way it does. The biggest mistake I see people make is that things are too perfect. Organic things like trees aren't perfectly straight, smooth, or even symmetrical, especially with trees. People forget that they're not two-dimensional objects. So you'll have branches going off to the side, this side coming at you and going back. I also see people making edges too sharp. So this was actually something that my dad had taught me when I was like 13. So he worked for a TV station making commercials. Sometimes he'd have to cut out elements in order to animate them. But he would tell me that a lot of times people would just make a perfectly clean cut edge on all of their photos and it just looked kind of off, like jagged almost. So what he did is he took a photo and he zoomed way in. He said, look at this edge here. It's not perfectly clean. It's actually fuzzy, like it blends into the rest of the background. So he would just take what he would call a fuzzy brush and he would use a fuzzy brush to erase the background around his object. I didn't realize how much of a difference that made. Then I would catch so many other people making that same mistake over and over again. So when I'm doing a photo bash, I always remember to keep my edges just slightly fuzzy, even when I'm painting. Now that I have my trees mapped out, I will put the leaves on it and I see a lot of people just cover the branches, like covering all the branches, but the leaves are only on like the ends of the twigs. Now I don't need to paint every single twig, but I can keep my bunches of leaves towards like the ends of the branches and let some of the branches peek through. Then I'm going to repeat this process again on the antlers and make all of the antlers look like large trees. This is one of the reasons why I like darker light settings because you can really play with like the silhouettes and stretch the designs in a much more convincing way because there's a lot of detail omitted by what you can't see in the dark. Maybe that's cheating, but visually it also gives me the opportunity to create much, much more dramatic lighting, which I also like. Pretty much from here on out is all the same techniques I use in digital painting. Most of my elements are pretty neutral lighting, so I can just paint my highlights and shadows wherever I want them. The elk had the most contrast, but I can work with that and just paint everything else to match. Easy peasy. As far as the order of which I tackle my elements, it really depends on the piece for me. I remember hearing one person say that they would start with the most important element since that's where they want the focus to be. So I gave that a try and the foreground and the elk are really the two elements that I want to stand out the most. Um, just because I feel like those two elements by themselves would suggest the scale of the elk. Usually I do go in with my shadows first, but since this is mostly shadow, I kind of skipped that step and went straight for the highlights, but I start off subtle and then I just build up layers bit by bit. And really after that first layer, I just right went into rim lighting. So rim lighting in its simplest definition is when you have light around the edges of your subject. It looks really cool, but the thing about rim lighting is it can be really tempting to just outline everything and you can't do that. Maybe you can, but it doesn't look as good. It works best if your lighting does make some sort of sense. <laughs> so I'm picturing the glow of the moonlight coming off from the right and slightly above. So the brightest edges are going to be where it's facing that light source directly. I'm gonna take advantage of this intense contrast and really define the elk's face, the horns, and each one of these little tree huts. I defined some of the fur along the back line, but I'm going to ease up on the detail here because I don't want it to get too busy. I'm also going to put some more extreme lighting on the foreground rocks. I did make a bit of an artistic choice to put some lighting on the wrong side of the rocks 
because they wanted it to stand out from the tree line. Now, this can still work, but it falls more into the category of bounce light, which I'll explain shortly. My depth was feeling really off because my background layer was originally just a silhouetted tree line with that night sky. Generally speaking, your elements in the foreground will have more contrast and the things in the distance will appear more gray just because you have particles in the sky that obstruct your vision. So I want to pull that focus forward and subdue the background just a little bit. So I do that by adjusting the curves. Then I continue putting some lighting on all my trees so that the elk really fits into that lighting scenario that I'm trying to build. Once that's done, I will work on some bounce lighting. Now this can be a very subtle thing, but it brings just the entire piece to life because light reflects pretty much off of everything. So if you imagine that your light is hitting those trees and then it's bouncing back off of the trees onto your subject, where would that light source hit? So I'm picturing that I have a subtle light source coming from that bottom left reflecting on the jaw of my elk, and it can define some of the extra shape that we had originally lost. I'm not gonna go crazy on this because remember, less is more. <laughs> okay, up to this point, we've been having some fun, but now, now, we start adding some firelight, and this makes me so happy. First of all, greenish blue mixed with orange-ish, gold-ish colors is my favorite color scheme on the face of the planet. So I'm just painting right into the windows a bright orange light, and then we're gonna go back and add some even deeper orange around the windowsills and touching those branches where the light falls, and it all just gets a little bit more exciting. It draws your attention, and this is so fun, peeps. <laughs> now I was liking this, but it didn't really feel finished to me. So I added a torch in the foreground and then suddenly we had some purpose. Like maybe the elk is making his way towards that torch. He's looking at it. Uh, maybe they're supposed to meet someone there. Maybe the people or creatures living inside those huts take a break to get out and hunt. Now we have a story. Now there's movement. Now we have more excuse to add even more awesome glowing firelight. And we're gonna add it on the rocks, on the elk, on the trees, everywhere. But as it gets farther and farther away from the light source, it does get more subdued. And I got a little too excited and I forgot about the leaves on the elk horn trees. So we go back and we slap some leaves on that so the trees don't look like they're dead. And then we add some more firelight to the leaves because why not? So I was feeling pretty good about all this and I tweaked the way the torch looked a bit and I thought, well, let's add one more layer. So I set it on overlay and I'm just gonna do like a haze of light around the spot and see what happens. And it hit me like, oh, that's what it needed. It was like a punch of color to the face. And I was like, wow, let's do that again. So we did a little around each of the huts. And at that moment I was ready to call it done, but I forced myself to breathe for a moment and take a step back to look at the whole composition. So I did add a little bit of a vignette off to the side because my eye felt like it wanted to trail off in that direction. And I feel like that vignette just put a little gate around my line of sight so that I stay in the area of interest. Really, in the end, I should probably just crop this, but I was wanting to use the dimensions of a YouTube thumbnail and I was kind of married to the idea. Just crop it. It's cropped on Instagram. It looks way cooler. You can check it out at Sparrow Springs on Instagram. So make sure you watch your YouTube notifications for when I post polls if you want to have any say of what you see on this channel. Make sure you vote or you can leave a comment down below. The next video will be a traditional art. I do try to go every other video, so just to keep you people interested. And that's all for now, peeps. I will see you in the next video. Wow, you're still here. I mean, that's cool. I'm just dying back here trying not to cough. This video took way longer than I expected, mostly because after I lost two hours worth of recording, I kind of lost motivation. <laughs> I also suffer from interrupting toddler syndrome and I got sick and my dog got sick. This is him. And then we were out of town and we had a huge birthday party for my son, Arrow. Okay, it's been a stressful month. I am officially declaring today, love a creator day because it's hard to keep pumping out content for people's entertainment and learning. <laughs> I'm done with my excuses. Go make something or just go watch another video. That's probably what I would do in your position.